welcome everyone to our first Up and Away lesson stream. This is going to be crazy. We've got a presentation ready for you. Even though, I know we said we don't like slides, but here we are. It's just for basics. I mean, it'll be best for helping us out here. So, just just for a refresher, if you don't remember who we are, uh, I'm Nick Hill. I'm the president of Project Aviate, and I'll have the rest of my officers introduce themselves. Hi there, my name is Steven. Uh, I'm Yufraj, Vice President. And I am Calvin, uh, the one of the officers. Except we can't, he, he can't have his camera on because uh, he's streaming something special that we're going to talk about very soon. So I hope you all are doing well, and I guess let's just get right into it. So for now, I'm going to turn off the audio from the simulator. All right. So you might remember these very familiar slides from our first meeting, but we have, we've got some new material for you today. And in fact, the first thing that we're going to be talking about is um, how you're going to be learning with us at Up and Away. And it's where we tried to come up with the most immersive way possible to do this. We didn't want to give you like a typical ground school course, you know, with textbook quizzes. We're not trying to do that. Instead, we're trying to get you right into it with immersion with a mobile flight simulator. So uh, you, if you're on our email list, you might have gotten an email uh, saying or asking for you to download a uh, mobile flight simulator, in particular X-Plane 10 mobile, which or X-Plane mobile, which we're going to talk about very soon. But using a mobile flight simulator is really simple to use, or at least simple compared to the simulator that you've been seeing this whole time. Um, all you got to do is download it from the App Store or Play Store. And X-Plane Mobile is really good with um, tutorials and learning the user interface. And just like that, you can start flying. It's actually, it'll take you some time to get used to because you're going to be, you have, your, you have your phone and you're going to be flying around like this, you know, but... It's not the same as, you know, the control column or a or yoke or a joystick, but it's definitely a good way to get started. And because the simulator that we're going to be using for you is really immersive, it's really well made. You know what? I'm just going to talk about it right now. What we're going to do, uh, this is the simulator that um, that we'd like we'd like to have you use as you learn how to fly with us. And uh, it's really it's really well made. It's really immersive. Um, it comes with a Cessna 172 and a Cirrus SF-50 Vision Jet for free. And all the buttons and dials in it are really well simulated. It's even got a full GPS, but we don't call it, you know, we don't say the GPS in an airplane. But don't worry, we'll get to that later. And it's very similar to the desktop X-Plane that you've been seeing me fly this whole time. And, um, and it's really easy to use, got a simple user interface. And it's really easy to get started with. So we do recommend that you take some time to like get get a feel around this app. I've used it several times, and um, oh, it's quite and, amazing. Uh, let yeah. me just add real quick. Uh, the link to this slide is in the description. So if you open it up, you can actually get those links um, in red and download um, Xplane on iOS or Android. Yep. So if you want, yeah, like he said. We've got the links in the description, so check those out. You can follow along with us if you'd like. Um, what else about X-Plane Mobile? I mean, it is also IFR capable, instrument flight rules capable, but we're not going to get to that for a while. We're just going to learn the basics for right now. And with that, there are other flight sim mobile flight simulators that have been around longer. And I'll have uh, Steven talk about our next one, which is Infinite Flight. All right, awesome. awesome. So, Infinite Flight is a paid simulator. It is going to be $5 for the base app. You just have to pay that one time. And it is both on iOS and Android. If you want, the base, the base program will cost you $5, and it will give you approximately um, 15 aircrafts. And if you pay for a subscription, which is yearly or monthly, you, you can choose whichever one you want. Uh, you can unlock all aircrafts and up to 60 of them. And um, 
it does cost quite a lot for the subscription, but the subscription also lets you fly with other people live in the same server so you can see other aircrafts flying around. Those are actual people flying them in, in the simulator. And you can also be an air traffic controller for those live servers so you can be controlling uh, aircrafts which are flown virtually. So this is our recommendation for a paid uh, mobile simulator, which is Infinite Flight. It is $5 if you would like to check it out. And go ahead and click those red links to Infinite Flight on iOS or Android. And it'll bring you to the Play Store or the App Store and you can try it out if you would like. Yeah, that's great. And also, I'd, I'd like to add that X-Plane also recently came out with, uh, X-Plane Mobile came, recently came out with multiplayer. So there's, there's tough competition between these two now. And uh, now that's basically it for the mobile flight sims. I know there's many that we've probably missed, but none are truly as developed as these two sims in terms of realism and immersion. Yeah, so uh, we were talking about uh, Infinite Flight and X-Plane and how they're really good advanced simulators. And I was just talking about how if there's any other simulators, I mean, I'm not sure, but I consider them to be more closer to games than simulators or these two. Um, although X-Plane does have an aspect where you can play it like a game, but it's definitely a simulator more than it is a game. So I mm -hmm. wanted to put that out there. Yeah. And now that we're done with mobile flight sims, if you feel like you know getting even more into it sometime in the future, we do have some PC simulator recommendations. I should say PC slash Mac, although only one of these is compatible with Mac. Mm -hmm. And I think you could take your wildest guess as to what it is. It's X-Plane 11. Um, X Plane Eleven, well, uh, is the one that, huh? If you wanted to get X Plane Ten, that's available too. So me and Henry, who's the other pilot who wasn't available today, we run X Plane Ten, which is uh, which has a fewer features and is a little less advanced than X Plane Eleven, which is the latest model that uh, Nikhil's yeah. running on his computers. Yeah, X Plane Ten is just the uh, a little bit older version of Eleven. Mm -hmm. But in general, X-Plane is what I've been using for a while, and Yuvraj and Henry as well. Uh, yeah. It's so both X -Plane PC is, and Mac compatible. Exactly. So me and Nikhil use our X-Planes on Macs, but Henry runs it on a Windows laptop. Yeah. And it's a fully capable, it's got, they like to, they, they uh, market themselves as using this really fancy physics concept called blade element theory, and therefore they claim to have really good physics. And... It's true, they, their physics are really good. And it's also IFR capable, VFR capable. You can, you can get into this maybe like once you've, once you've really explored X-Plane Mobile because a lot, of the, a lot of the feel of X-Plane Mobile does transfer to the X-Plane desktop version. And in fact, what you saw at the beginning of the stream, uh, the, pic, the uh, Cessna parked on the runway. I shouldn't say parked, but it's, it was on the runway. Uh, that that's from X. -Plane. Lined up. Uh, yeah, lined up on the runway. Right that's term. yeah. That's that would be X Plane Eleven. There's one more major simulator that's been around for a while. It's called Prepared, not Prepare Three D. It's just that the three is a reverse E, and this simulator is only for Windows, but it also has really good simulators or physics and a lot of aircraft developed for it. Uh, I haven't and... I haven't I haven't used that one much, so I can't say as much about it but there is that that's, that's the one developed by lockheed martin right yeah that is the lockheed martin and yeah so the basically the two top runners at this point are explained and prepared don't worry i'm getting to that last one but microsoft fsx now i don't want to call them a meme flight simulator but they've been i, I believe they've been around the almost the longest like microsoft has yes, had actually. flight simulators for a very long time, FSX is just mm -hmm. like the whatever. It's it's several generations down, but it's um, they also have good aircraft developed for it. It's just that their physics are a little bit outdated. So I wouldn't recommend if you really want to get a good uh, PC simulator. I'm not so sure I'd recommend FSX, but that is up to you. Aerofly FS2 is also out there. Uh, they're really new. They they look a lot like FSX actually. But um, I haven't been able to look at that one much for me to say how good the physics in it are. But And finally, everyone, well, you may not, it's okay if you don't know this yet. Welcome to the crazy avi 
aviation flight simming community where everyone goes gaga over this very last flight simulator, Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. And the picture that you see on the left here under PC Sims is from Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Um, we don't know much about physics at this point because it's not released yet, although we can say that it's probably the most immersive one because they have this really cool, they have this really cool thing where uh, they take satellite imagery of the entire world and using artificial intelligence, figure out building heights and uh, apply textures to those buildings. And so what you see down there is basically what you would see in real life. Most other flight simulators, like all the ones previously mentioned, use auto-generated scenery, but you can make custom modeled scenery, but with Microsoft Flight Simulator, the whole world is there already. But it's really new. If you ask me, I would wait a little bit, but I mean, if you're in the crazy uh, flight sim community and you're really hyped about it, then you could just, you could just get it. But as, as I said earlier, um, if, you really, if you're really new to flight simulators, if you're really new to aviation, I wouldn't start with a big desktop flight simulator because these are an investment. Mobile is definitely the way to go. It's free for X-Wing Mobile at least and really immersive out of the box. So I'd definitely start there. And speaking of that, we're now going to show you what we've got for our little mobile flight simulator gig. And let me take a let me show you that. Oh, I should stop doing that. Um, Calvin, your stream's on, right? Okay. So what I'm about to show you is that's x Mobile that you see on the bottom right corner. Uh, this, we have our, uh, we're going to be having Calvin, who's one of our officers, he's going to be showing you what you would see if you were using x Mobile. So just to reiterate, we are, we are primarily going to use x Mobile to help you uh, get immersed in the flight sim world, but... Um, Okay, that's okay. So what, what you see here, uh, this is the starting screen of X-Plane Mobile. Oh, it, it just disappeared for a second. We're, it'll come back in a few seconds. Yeah, there we are. Yeah, so I, the idea is we will show you a concept on the slides and then Nikhil, uh, he has some experience flying. So he'll show you uh, how the concept works in real life on on his simulator, on his computer, and then we're going to have Calvin kind of try and, and we're going to try and teach him pretty much today. And basically he is the representation of you all in the audience. So if you're following along with your little mobile flight simulator, uh, that's great. And uh, let's, let's see if we can, ooh, it's a little it's bit. It's like a flight tutorial. Yeah, it's a flight tutorial with the mobile flight simulator. Um, what's, what just happened? Okay, so... I guess we could get into the next slide before you get to see Gosh. our lovely little Sims again. Let's get you into the world of flying now. Let's start with the complicated, not so complicated, but you get the idea. You you can take it away, Yuvraj. Thank you, Nikhil. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the, the actual physics of flight real quick. Um, pretty much the forces uh, acting on an airplane. Uh, so, yeah, I can see the bottom half of the slide Sorry, is kind of hard for the, you to see. No, that's yeah, okay. Don't worry about it. it. Um, hmm? So, th this remove is in text, okay. but an easy, way to, an easy way to display this would be uh, with this diagram I have. So, uh, Nikhil, can you go to the uh, slide 22, the diagram? Are you there? Yeah. The, okay, The stream's thanks. a little bit lagging, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was confused about the lag. So you can see um, the orange line that is running from the left wingtip to the right wingtip. That's the that's the uh, lateral axis of an airplane, and that's an axis that an airplane can move along. So uh, the lateral axis is is the movement along the lateral axis Make is controlled slide, by the slide. elevator of the airplane, um, which oh, is. Um, this. You yeah, wanted... the next slide. Oh, 22. Well, I have, yeah, I, have I can't see the slide the numbers. Slide. Oh, I can actually. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. 22, Sorry, just start that again. Yeah. yeah, sure, no problem. Yeah. So the orange line that you can see running from the left wingtip to the right wingtip, 
Uh, that's uh, the lateral axis of an airplane, and it controls uh, the airplane can pretty much move along that axis. So it controls what we call pitch, uh, which is pretty much essentially how far up or down your nose is pointing in comparison to the horizon. Um, and it's controlled by the elevators. Now, the elevators are on the on the left diagram, the red the red uh, control surfaces uh, on the back set of like smaller wings are th that's the, that those are called the elevators, and that's what con that those are the control surfaces that control movement along the lateral axis, uh, in pitch. So again, on the right diagram, um, the blue line running from the nose of the airplane out the back of the tail, that's the longitudinal axis, and that's another axis an airplane can move along. Um, and that's controlled by the ailerons, and it's called a roll. So pretty much a roll is uh, like how how banked you are to the left or right. So we're, we'll display this very soon in an actual flight simulator. But yeah, so it's controlled by ailerons, which on the left diagram you can see are uh, uh, the yellow control surfaces. Uh, and those move up and down in different directions, but Steven's going to explain that later. Um, so I'll leave that to him. And then the vertical axis in green on the right diagram is yaw. And you can see it kind of points the nose to the left or right. Um, and it's controlled by the rudder. Um, it's called yaw. So the rudder you can see on the left diagram is the blue control surface, which moves left and right and uh, directs air in the right direction to uh, put, you know, point your nose in the direction that you want it to. You can control that with um, pedals. But again, Steven's going to explain that in more detail later. Yeah. And then those are pretty much, those are the things that essentially control an airplane and how it flies around. But the actual physics behind it, can you go to slide 21 again, Nikhil? Yeah. Uh, OK, so. The actual physics of an airplane, there's four forces that act on, the four basic forces that act on an airplane at any given time. And as you can see here, uh, those are thrust, which is provided by the engines, which pulls up air, or technically pushes the airplane forward. There's drag, which is pretty much the friction caused by uh, air hitting the airplane, the skin of the airplane at a very fast speed. There's lift, which pulls the airplane up. Um, which is produced by the wings, um, uh, the airfoil shape of the wings, and gravity, which pulls the plane down, because, you know, a plane's pretty heavy, and it has weight, and the Earth has gravity. So if you imagine these as four different vectors working on an airplane, for an airplane to be able to fly, the basic idea is you need more thrust than drag and more lift than gravity. So... That way, if you have more thrust and lift combined than gravity and drag pulling it back, you should be able to take off and be able to fly. And then after you're in the air, you can you can go to the slide, slide that I explained before um, with the axes and actually fly the airplane mm -hmm. in the direction that you want. All right. That's so pretty much a summary of the basics of the four forces that act on an airplane and how pretty much you can control it. Now, Stephen's going to do some more explaining in detail. Would you like me to show, now let you want to show this in the sim first? Or? Oh, yes, actually, I <laughs> forgot, my bad. Uh, we right. should probably demonstrate it in the simulator. All right, so just take, just take a second to absorb what you see in the slide, if you can. Mm -hmm. um, but okay. we don't so... like slides, so welcome to our simulator. Okay, so let's start with the lateral axis. Would you mind uh, pointing out the elevators, Nikhil? Yeah, so... Oh, I shouldn't go free camera. Listen. Sorry, give me a sec. Okay. It's okay. Um, let me turn the sound up a little so, bit so you can hear what a plane sounds like. I'm sure you know what a plane sounds like, but... <laughs> uh, here we go. Yeah, so kind of pull pull and push on the yoke so they can see the elevators so kind of flapping. The, these are the elevators. Whoa, I'll do this carefully. It's a little bit more pronounced here because we're so close to the airplane. But you can see, mm -hmm. if you look at the back here next to where it says Skyhawk, you can see the uh, you can see the elevators moving slightly. And what you'll notice is 
when the when the elevator sort of uh, tilt downward like that, the airplane goes down, and when the elevators tilt up like this, the, the Cessna goes up. This is a Cessna 172, by the way. This is the aircraft that most pilots this essentially train on, yeah. And... Uh, cool. Can we show them the longitudinal axis now? Now, this is the axis that runs from the nose of the airplane all the way down the tail. So this is roll. So yeah. So through the ailerons. Definitely a little bit slight, but you could kind of... Yeah, so the ailerons are uh, at the edge of the wings. You can hardly see them moving, but you can see a line running down the edge of the, the bottom edge of the wings. And yeah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, Nikulis did some pretty intense turns. And yeah. as you can see, they work in opposite directions, and they that's, that's how you control the roll of an airplane, pretty much the direction of, of where you're going. Yeah. So that's, ever made... again, longitudinal axis. If you've ever made a paper airplane and then curled the wings to face opposite directions to make it spiral, that's pretty much the same principle here. Yeah, that's, yeah, essentially, exactly. It's, per it's perfectly it. Yep. Um, and then the last axis we have left is the vertical axis, which is going to be running down the, the length of the cabin, down vertically. You want to show uh, us the rudder? You yeah, this one... Here? This one you don't want to use in the air too much, so... Yeah. But you can see, uh, you can see if you look, if you look at the back fin over here, you have a, you have a control surface that's like, moving slightly. And by the way, don't ever fly this <laughs> rash in real life. <laughs> yeah. But, You can yeah. actually end up stalling the airplane if you, if you flap around the rudder too much. Yeah. Um, but the reason we show this in the air is so that you can see what actually happens to the airplane. So the rudder is more used for countering wind and stuff that we'll get into later, but yeah. It's generally not used to actually uh, navigate. You use the ailerons to navigate, but um, in the, the air, rudder yeah. does have some special use, specialized use cases. Yeah. On the ground, you do you have to end up using the rudder. That's true. But that's not actually using the rudder. You're just pointing the nose wheel around. You can, you can see the nose wheel actually move a little bit. Well, but... So again, the nose wheel thing, that's only for the Cessnas, it's different on different airplanes. Yeah. But for small general aviation aircraft in general, you can assume that the rudder and nose wheel are connected. So let me quickly show you uh, what it would look like in the mobile flight simulator. Calvin, you've, you got the stream ready, right? Oh uh, yeah, let me just load it in. I see the stream from your... Yeah. Yeah, so, the stream's on. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, basically what happens is if you click on free flight and then you click on the uh, Cessna 172 Same. and then the plane icon on the bottom right, you'll get the fancy loading screen, which I'm sure everyone loves. But uh, <laughs> we'll quickly... The first time it'll like download 400 megabytes. So, yeah. yeah. And then you'll be presented with that screen to hold the device comfortably. This is so that the you can calibrate your controls. And show a little bit of the outside so you can see very much the same thing so let's operate the elevators first so you tilt your device up and down yeah you can see it right yeah and that that would be controlling the lateral axis as you Raj was talking about this will help you control pitch and for the ailerons this is what you use to bank left and right in the air uh, also known as roll yeah you you roll the airplane so yeah. it's pitch roll and yaw we're looking at my hand by any chance now i know you can't see calvin tilting his hands to do this but that's what you would do you'd take your you'd take your device and just tilt it in the respective directions except don't do it as extreme as you just saw it <laughs> you'll end up crashing the plane <laughs> please <laughs> oh uh and Calvin, finally, point out the rudder. They can't yeah, see the rudder. show us the rudder. Because you're moving the rudder, but they can't see it. And with rudder, there is... Um, I know you can tilt your hand a little bit to control the rudder, but the, in X-Plane Mobile, the rudder is primarily controlled with the with the slider that you see being moved. All right, the Calvin, calm right. down. <laughs> but yeah, so you get the point there. That's how that works. So, hey, the nose wheel yeah. can't move on the ground like that. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Assuming a zero. Calvin's just yeah. kind of going ham at it right now. On <laughs> yeah. So that's what, that's what that would look like in X-Flight Mobile. 
All right, so there's that. I, now you know how flight basically works. Uh, Uraj, did you want to talk about flaps yet? Or? Uh, sure. I mean, I can give them. I'll a talk down. about flaps. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Sure. So Steven. now we'll now we'll now that you have the surfaces that are responsible for actually moving the plane around. Obviously, a plane can't traditionally fly itself at this point. Uh, you have autopilot, but what I'm saying is, if you want an airplane to fly the way you see it fly, you have to control these surfaces that you've seen moving, and that's what Steven's going to talk about, flight controls. Let me switch the slides really quick. Uh, let me turn this off. Here we go. All right. Cool. So now that you guys have seen what those controls look like on the aircraft, this is how you control those aircraft, those um, flight controls within the inside of the aircraft. So we have two main things. We have the yoke and the side stick. So on the top picture, you see a side stick. It is uh, primarily used by Airbus, and it's just a little stick on the side. Um, the captain would use his left hand to control the stick. The uh, first officer would use his right hand because it's on the opposite side. The bottom oh, picture um, is a... Sorry, go ahead. Uh, in general aviation, Cirrus aircraft also love to use the side sticks compared to mm -hmm. yokes. Well. Yeah. Yep. So if not you, just commercial you, aircraft, yeah. but general, general aviation, aviation does. Um, but the side stick is, isn't too, like, It's common. not very common. It's just yeah. Cirrus aircraft. As In the as second know. picture below, that is what a yoke looks like. That is a Cessna 172. And that is exactly what it looks like. Uh, we do have a different variant of a yoke, which the... Embraer uses it's a little it's like it's a weird Y shape basically. Yeah, um, so these side sticks and the yokes are how you control those flight service this flight service controls. Um, of course you bank the side sticks to the left and the right. That's what rolls the plane, left and right. You push the yoke forward or bring it back, that's how you um, use the elevators to make you yourself go up and down in an aircraft and you can yaw the plane from left to right using the rudders uh you can't see the rudders in the in the uh, pictures but nikhil if you can use that little pointer thingy that you're using to show them where the rudders are located oh yeah the it, it's down oh it's covered by this uh this toolbar i can't get rid of this toolbar but you it's, can use the top picture the top picture works oh yeah it would normally be down here they usually control it with their feet mm -hmm. yeah so it'd be down here in the void yep. so of it's, the unknown. It's like, it's like foot pedals, like your car, but these pedals are used for the brakes and the rudders, and that's what yaws, yaws your plane. You also have a throttle and power. Uh, general, a, Most general aviation aircraft don't have a power. They have a throttle. Because they have a throttle, they also have a mixture. In the Cessna 172 picture, uh, the bottom one, you can see that um, his right hand is on something. That something is the throttle. Uh, that's what controls the amount of air going to the cylinders. The red so, knob next to him is the mixture, and that's what controls the fuel going to the cylinders. A lot of time when people imagine throttles, they imagine these big, massive levers that you push forward. And you know what? They're right in terms of general aviation, or in terms of commercial airplanes. But uh, people are often surprised to find out that the throttle in a Cessna is this tiny, underwhelming little knob that you push in and pull out. In terms yeah. of how, how much power you want. Yep. And let me actually, yeah, just, let me actually. I don't want you to be surprised. I'll show you that yep. in the sim, right? We've. Calvin is showing yeah. it. If you want to bring up Calvin's stream. Yeah, bring up my oh, stream. Oh yeah. Yeah, you can see on in the mobile flight simulator, you see the giant yellow cube with the throttles, and in a Cessna, like Yvraj said, very oh, underwhelming, oh. but very, very much powerful indeed. Yeah. Oh, very and he's showing too. the rudders too. Those are the rudder pedals. That's how you yaw the plane. In the bottom. So yep. unlike a car, yeah, exactly. The rudder pedals, they move. Um, if you push one and the other one comes out pretty much. Yeah. Let me, and I can also show you what happens. Um, let me see. Let me get rid of the slides. Uh, if I go into X-Plane right now and I show you. So if we want to roll left and right, you can look at the, you can look at the yoke right in front of you. So, or the control column. Do. In the Cessna, do you guys call these yokes or control columns? They're always interchangeable. Oh, yokes. Yokes. Yeah. Oh, okay. So control columns are the things that uh, 
in the, the whole Boeings. the whole columns on yeah. which the yoke is on like m m bigger planes. That makes sense. So this is this would just be a yoke. So you can see when when I uh, when I roll the yoke left or right. If I roll the yoke left, the airplane rolls to the left. It banks yeah, to the it's left. Yeah, the roll. And if I go to the right, it goes to the right. Very much, it's sort of like driving a car, except instead of a circle, you have a U, and you have to hold it with your hand on the side, and then like rest your thumb on this, on this crevice that you see here. But, oh my goodness. <laughs> um, so there's that. And the underwhelming little control that Calvin was talking about is this, the throttle oh, his, for your uh, speed. His dream is in the way. His dream is that. Okay, yeah, oh. there you go. You can see okay. the underwhelming little stick. And finally, probably the more dangerous thing to do in flight is to deal with this red knob. There's a reason it's red. Um, you don't want to be pulling this all the way out mid-flight because... Should I just that, show you what happens? Fuel to the engine. <laughs> yeah, so there's fuel gauges here. We'll talk about that later. But let me show you what happens when you pull it. Uh, you might have heard the propeller like start dying down and now we have warnings and now the propeller stopped working It's not spinning anymore <laughs> So this controls your fuel yeah. mixture and the idea of fuel fuel is just gasoline and it works And it works in airplanes just like a combustion engine in a car. You need to inject fuel To to get the engine to spin to into the combustion cylinder. Yeah, and that gets the engine to spin and that directs air backwards which gives you thrust forward and if you're an ap physics nerd that's called conservation of momentum but see a great thing in aviation uh, is don't touch anything that's red yeah exactly don't so, mess with anything that's red so actually what would happen if you're fast enough i the propellers do start spinning right if you're fast enough uh i don't know can you try uh, restarting it right now depends well uh let's see I wonder, I wonder if this ignition. works. I've never actually tried this. Oh. So if you're so wondering you why we aren't immediately dropping out of the sky like a rock, because the uh, the engine stopped, it's because uh, the engine stopping, all that means is we'll slowly start losing altitude and glide down to the ground, not immediately falling out of the sky. A lot of pe people that I meet seem to have that misconception. Yeah. They and think that if the engine stops, it just drops like a rock out of the sky. The last thing you ever want to trust is a movie when they talk about airplanes. Oh, no, God. if a thing if a thing oh, falls God. off an airplane, no, it does not go diving into the ground. In fact, let me... No, I'm not going to demonstrate. I was going to open the door, but maybe that's not such a good idea. But yeah, yeah. Oh. so like you just saw, even if you do the slightly not so smart thing of pulling this giant red lever, you're not going to crash. You can still glide. In fact, there are airplanes that don't have engines and they're called gliders. And what do they do? They just glide like this. Yeah, you they, could- They you, actually, the way they get them up in the air is they have another airplane tow them up into the sky and then release the tow rope and then they have to glide back yeah. with no engines. But you can see, the wings are still generating lift. Uh, Cessna's uh, control surfaces are mechanical, so we don't need to worry about um, we don't need to worry about losing control of our airplane at all. Actually, so when Nikhil says are, mechanical, what he means is that the yoke is ma physically connected using wires to all the control surfaces, unlike in bigger commercial aircraft where it's often done with hydraulic systems which are powered by the engines. Yeah. So in bigger aircraft, they need to have backup systems because sometimes if the engines die, that kills the whole hydraulic system, and they often don't. And that pretty much ends up meaning that they don't have any of the control surfaces even. But that's not how it is in a general aviation. Hey, aircraft. but if your wire is breaking the Cessna, you can't control them anymore. <laughs> okay, well, that's a different problem. Let's not scare them too much. <laughs> All right. But yeah, that's a. I'll move different on. Problem. Talking about the trim and flaps now. Yeah, let me go ahead and pause so, the sim. Let me let me switch Actually, you can go ahead and quick. demonstrate what the. The flaps look like. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Like. Let me let me quickly so, start up the engine. So yeah, also while you're don't freak yeah, out. While you're demonstrating you're... the the yeah. flaps, I'll just talk about what they are. Yeah. Um, so basically the flaps are. So you saw the ailerons, which are on the outer parts of the wing. On the inner parts of the wing, those are also moving control surfaces. They're called the flaps. Uh, when you deploy the flaps, you create more drag, 
And the reason why we want more drag is because when we descent, we don't want to overspeed or we want to keep our speed at a uh, specific number. Yeah. So really in quick, order to Steven. descend fast, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Calvin's showing flaps on his simulator right now. You can see in, mm -hmm. you can see the giant, well, they look like flaps. <laughs> They're on the back of the airplane and they tilt downward. And the way Calvin did so, that um, was with the bottom right control in the slider on the bottom right. Uh, show it again. Yeah. And you can make the flaps go up and down. And it shows you a number with degrees, but we'll explain that in a second. So, yeah, so Stephen flaps explained how yeah. they they uh, uh, increase drag a lot, but they also increase lift. Because if you increase drag but don't increase lift, then that's no good because you're just inviting the stall. So I just wanted to make yeah. sure. So the flaps allow the pilots to descend faster without increasing speed. Uh, when I mean descend faster, it's just you know feet per minute. You're descending a lot. You're dropping down a lot faster, but you're not increasing your speed. Uh, pilots also use these flaps during takeoff. So if, for example, in the Cessna, we would put them approximately 10 degrees and you would take off with them. Uh, because they generate more, they help us generate more lift, we can take off earlier and faster. Uh, we could take off earlier yeah, and lift off a lot faster. So let me show you what that looks like. Uh, you probably already saw it on the outside. On the inside of the Cessna, it's this little, it's this little uh, slider White at the, the bottom panel of the cockpit. And what happens is, move this down, and you can see it starts going down. But let me show you what actually happens. So. Let me just show you, I'm in level, well, I'm not in level flight. Let me get into level flight. So I'm in, I'm sort of in level flight right now. And we're just, we're just cruising normally. And watch what happens. So now I'm going to, you're going to see the flaps lever down here. I'm going to bring that down one notch to 10 degrees. And then watch what happens. I'm going to let go of the controls as I do this. So what you're noticing right now is the plane suddenly lifting off, lifting off, lifting up. <laughs> and that's because flaps help you generate extra lift. And if you saw this indicator on the left here, let me show you this indicator on the left. You saw that suddenly go down. This is the airspeed indicator. It tells you how fast you're going, just a speedometer, basically. And you saw that go way down. So as, as Steven was saying, when you deploy flaps, you get lift and you lose speed. And this is helpful for landing because you don't want to be using up entire runways to land your airplane. That would be bad. So they want to get oh, um, airplanes slow enough to land. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, speed up the airplane and then put, uh, put down the flaps and show them the feet per minute indicator, the vertical speed. Yeah. So if, you, if, if, you, start, if you start off, I can actually make the plane go instantly faster. <laughs> Give me a second. There <laughs> uh, we are. So if, if we're going like really fast, you're gonna break the flaps off. <laughs> uh, the flaps, oh, the flaps are still deployed. Okay, let me show you. So we're now we're going at like uh, 120 indicated airspeed, 120 knots indicated airspeed. And since we're going really fast for a Cessna, if I, if I extend the flaps now, which is a bad idea, do not do this in real life, but watch what happens. I'm gonna let go of the controls. And then zoom into the, vertical speed indicator. And you can see the vertical speed just like shoots up and we lose a bunch of speed. And don't worry. Now you might think we're going absolutely crazy. Don't worry, we're fine. All right. <laughs> so that was a little dangerous demonstration. Don't ever do this in real life. Uh, that but... was, I mean, you performed a successful stall, so. Yeah, you do actually hey. get to do this in flight training, but. <laughs> Uh, not as, as not, not as aggressive. Not as aggressive. Not yeah. as intense. Yeah. Whatever we're Don't showing you in the sim, wings off. Whatever we're showing you in the sim, please take with a grain of salt. But like you, Raj was saying, if we're going really fast, not much happens. But if we're going really slow, and I and I, let's say I go a little bit below sixty knots, and I'm descending a little bit. If I extend the flaps another notch now, you see, the, the vertical speed gain is not as extreme because we're not generating as much lift on the airplane when we're going slower anyway. So it's never as pronounced as you just saw like 30 seconds ago, if you're doing so, it right. Um, real quick, you mm -hmm. may think that all of us are speaking gibberish and you might not understand any of this, but 
honestly, the best way to kind of get a feel for it and what claps do is to download the simulator and try it out. Yeah. That's so, the only real way to fully understand how they work. And so, yeah, Calvin, why don't you, why don't you show us a little bit of that? So your flaps are 10 degrees good, set for takeoff. Now you can take off. You can just go ahead and take off. I think I can increase your sound maybe. Uh, oh, we don't hear much of your sound. Oh, try. I kind of lowered it a little bit. Make sure you're not using too much rudder once you're in the air. You want to use primarily uh, aileron movement, so just tilting your hands. Make sure you're not. So while he's demonstrating the flaps, the next control surface, which is the last one I'm going to talk about, is the trims. Um, you don't use the trim much uh, until you're really comfortable with the aircraft. The trim, so when you're climbing or descending, you have to continuously pull back on the yoke or push on the yoke. The trim basically lets you adjust that to where you can let the aircraft fly itself. Not in the same way as what an air autopilot does, but let's say you're descending, you're inbound to land at San Francisco, and you need to push the yoke down because you have to descend. And sometimes if you're going too fast and you need to descend, at a greater vertical speed per minute, you're gonna to have to be fighting against the yoke and you're gonna be pushing down on that. And in order to not do that, you, what you can do is you can use the trim slider and you can set it to where it's a nose down attitude. Uh, just like what Calvin is doing in the stream right now. He, you see a little wheel spinning on the bottom of the aircraft or in the middle of the aircraft. Uh, he is spinning it towards a nose down position. So that's gonna automatically push the nose down. Um, there's going to be a picture where I'm going to show you where the trim is in the next slide. So that's the control surface, or that's how you control the trim oh, from the inside. I, I low-key spoiled it already. <laughs> I just zoomed in on the trim. But, uh, that's fine. No, no. Uh, I'll sh yeah? No, no, um, you showed the, the inside. I was, I was going to show what it looks oh, like the outside. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah let, me, let me pull so up the slides. So when you're ready, you can switch. Yeah, when you're ready, you can switch to the slides. Uh, slide 24. Hey, hey, Steven. Yep. Correct me if I'm wrong, but... The way I understand it is pilots need to hold the yoke uh, and then position the yoke onto the pitch that they want to have the plane at. And then at that pitch, they would generally feel a pressure on their hand from the yoke if it's pushing yeah. or pulling against you. Mm -hmm. And you would adjust the trim accordingly to that, right? To have yeah. have it stay neutral and not put that's pressure on That's the easiest way hand. to do it. Is that correct? Yeah, that's the right. easiest way to do it. But if you need super micro adjustments, you don't really, if you're, you're not even, your hands are not mm -hmm. even, on the yo, you can just like use the trim a tiny bit, and you don't really need oh, yeah, to have right. your the, hand. The, the yeah, that is the easiest way. I wanted to add something and really then, quick. Yep. As we're talking about all these control surfaces, don't worry if you get lost in all the names of these control surfaces. X Plane Mobile is really helpful in that all the controls of the buttons and everything are named. So when you click on something, it'll show you the name. But just get used to what they actually do first. That's what matters mm -hmm. more. Right. So, yeah, Stephen, you can okay. continue. Exactly. So, we are looking on the slides. Uh, that is a Cessna 172. So, we're going to look at the top picture first. Uh, on the outer parts of the wing, we can see the ailerons. The left side of the aileron is up and the right side is down. Uh, if you look at the bottom right picture, um, the person that's using the aircraft is turning the yoke to the left, which banks the airplane to the left. Going back to the top picture, when you bank the if you turn the yoke to the left, your left aileron goes up and your right aileron goes down. So that's why in the top picture, you see on the outer parts of the wing, the left side is up and the right side is down. Um, and the reason why this turns an aircraft is because, well, let's back out for a second. Uh, air goes, moves, so when air moves past the wing, it moves slower below the wings and faster above the wings. So that gives you a higher pressure below the wings and a lower pressure above. That is what generates lift. Um, higher pressure will always seek lower pressure. So when you have higher pressure below the wings, it will seek the lower pressure above the wing, which 
uh, generates lift, and that's what lift is. It pushes your aircraft up. So sort same of like thing. A vacuum cleaner. Yeah. <laughs> so same thing when you uh, use your ailerons when you're banking left, the left aileron goes up, the right aileron goes down. Uh, the when the right aileron goes down, it increases lift, but it also increases drag. The reason why it increases lift is because when it goes down, it is now facing air. It is now facing a greater amount of air, so that will move your right wing upwards and your left wing downwards. That makes you bank to the left. Um, the reason why it increases drag, well, and when you increase lift, you increase drag. So that's why we have the rudders. Um, when you increase drag on the right side and not the left side, you're now basically slipping the aircraft uh, without using, so if you're turning the aircraft without using any rudder, uh, you're in uncoordinated flight, which is basically either skidding or slipping the turn. In this case, if you're not using rudder and you're turning, you're slipping it. If you use too much rudder, you're skidding it. Looking at the uh, picture on the bottom left, that is where the rudder is located. You can see the the uh, vertical uh, control surface. That's where the that's where the rudder is located, and you also see the elevators. Of course, the elevators do what is what its name is. It moves you up and down because that's what elevators in real life do. Yeah. Um, it's a very so, good analogy for call that. them lift. Yep. So I, I found a right way now, to get the forces to be shown in the simulator. Do you want to show them that? Mm -hmm. Uh, give me a second. I'll just talk okay. about the trim real quick. So in the bottom left picture, on the right elevator, you can see a little tab there. Um, Nikhil, if you want to use mm -hmm. a little marker to show them a little tab, that is what the trim is. So when you're turning that little wheel that Nikhil was showing you and Kyle Wait, was where? showing Sorry, you the, like, the trim of the Cessna 172. On the, uh, the, the right, the right elevator. Here. Move down. Move yeah. down. No, underneath the trim tab. The yeah. little rectangle at the bottom edge of the elevator. There's a this, yeah this. To your left, move to your left, move no, to your no, left. Yeah, that thing right there. Yeah, that there thing right you there. Go. You see that? Yeah. Yeah. No. Or, yes. Yep, that, there. Yeah. That yep. thing. That is the you trim. So when you're moving the That's little the wheel inside the cockpit, that is what you're moving outside. What sucks about so Google Slides is it's basically half blocking it. But yeah, it's mm -hmm. a mini elevator, in a way. Yep, it's a mini elevator which you can uh, control. Yeah. That is what the trim looks like. And um, so back onto the top picture, I'll just give you some fun facts. The little two things sticking up from the top picture are the uh, radios. Those are your radio antennas. The So on the top part of the wing on the top picture, you can see two red dots. Those are your fuel caps. That's where you load fuel in. And uh, two tanks, one on the left wing, one on the right wing. And between those two circles, those two red dots, that's your GPS, your little white bumpy thing right there. Um, and right next to the GPS is a little outside air temperature probe. You might not be able to see it, but it's right next to the GPS. Um, that's just where it's located. Yeah. And another fun fact, why the control surfaces have these little lines on them. You can you can notice there's a lot of lines. They're not on the wings, but they're on the ailerons, flaps, elevators. It's because the lines make them more uh, durable. And they're just a lot more stronger with the lines. Yeah. Great. That's how they're built. Yeah. And if we take a look back at the simulator, I can actually show you the forces in action. Let's cover the, the slides. Don't get uh, intimidated by all the lines that you see, but watch what happens as I operate the airplane a little bit. You can see the lines sort of moving based on the force that, that's being applied to it at any given time. You can see... Ah. While you're on this picture, I'll talk about the propellers real quick. Oh, so yeah. the propellers have blades, and the blades are angled in a specific way. When they're spinning, you have a lower pressure on the front side of the blade, and you have a higher pressure on the back side of the blade. So, of course, higher pressure seeks lower pressure. So the back of the, the blade will seek the front. The air in the back will seek the front. So basically, that's what pulls your plane forward, or drives the plane forward. And you can see the little lines. Uh, that's where yeah. the... It's basically pulling forward. And if you notice, what I'm actually doing is changing. I'm changing the amount of throttle. So if you look in the cockpit here, I'm changing the amount of throttle. And if you look on the outside, it's reflective of the same thing. You can see the length of these lines, which tells you how strong that force is, is dependent on how much throttle I put into it. So how much, yeah. Another fun fact about the propeller. If you look up any airplane propeller, you'll see that it's kind of tapered. It's, it's not one 
straight tilted edge. The the edge closer to the center of the propeller is more tilted and at an angle compared to the outside edge. And that's because as the propeller spins, it's obviously it's a circle. So if if I spin this, this this section this uh, the outside of my hand is covering a much longer distance than the inside of my hand. So if it was an even even propeller then over time because the outside is moving at a greater distance and greater speed it would actually bend the propeller out of shape over time yeah so that's why propellers on airplanes they're tapered um because uh the outside is moving a lot faster and is dealing with more forces than the inside yeah so to kind of counteract that and make sure the propeller doesn't get warped over time they, yeah. they taper them calvin uh show them if you want to see these cool lines in action uh, Calvin, click on flight model. I think, believe that's what that's what shows you the lines, right? Yep, you can get in mobile too. You can see the giant big lines and see yeah. how the forces and, and interact. Can, yeah. Can you view the plane from the front side? So, looking at the propeller. The, the very front. Yeah. Just... There we go. Well, there's a delay. I'm just waiting for it. Yeah. Um, you can start. So, so fun fact is you can notice that. Uh, you go ahead and zoom out a little bit. So what you can notice is that. Um, so the wings are connected to the uh, air aircraft. You notice on the lines on top of the wings, when it's closer to the aircraft, it is um, there's a greater amount of force. And when you're on the outer side of the wings, those lines decrease in size. And that's because if you notice on the wings, um, they're basically going upwards. They're not straight across. The wings aren't like completely flat horizontally. On the inner parts of the wing, closer to the cabin it is lower on the and then on the outside of the wings it is a little higher the wings are like basically making a u shape think of it you like can't a, really tell think of it yeah, like you a can't bird really tell. you know even it's like birds. a bird it's like it's not like straight across it's like a little upwards and that's mm -hmm. because um, it makes the aircraft a little more stable and when you're stalling an aircraft stalling is basically you're losing speed and your aircraft is basically falling out of the sky when you There's stall no the air aircraft flow over the airfoil yeah, so you're not creating enough lift, you stall the aircraft. And the reason why the wings are designed in this little U shape is because uh, when you stall, you don't stall the entire wing. You stall the outer sides of the wing and not the inner sides, which still gives you a tiny bit more lift than the outside. Whoa. So because it gives you a tiny bit more lift than the outside, um, it makes stalls a little easier to um, be recoverable. And it also makes your plane a little more stable. If you had your wing... If you had your entire wing stall at once, um, in like a turning stall, if you stall one entire wing and not the other one, then your airplane's going to start spinning and you're going to be falling out of the sky like in a spiral, you know, spin. But if you're having this wing where like the inner parts are still generating a little lift and the outer parts aren't, aren't, aren't generating a lot of lift, it is not stalling the entire wing and you're still, it's a little more stable. Your inner wings are still generating a little lift. And you can actually see this, you can see this in the slide. If you look at the Cessna picture that you see in the slide, you can sort of see the the U shape, the bird, like mm -hmm. this. If you look at the slide, you picture. notice the outer parts of the wing are pointed a little upwards more than yeah. the inner parts. Yeah. Let me show you with the pointer, and then really quick, uh, we have one last thing to get to. But you can see the outer parts a little bit higher up, mm -hmm. and then it like it forms a U, and then it tilts back up again. So that's cool. We have right, one we last thing on left to cover. Side. Yeah, it's. Cool. You've probably seen when you go to an airport, there's so many different types of aircraft, and uh, mm -hmm. here we are. So I'm not going to be going into, I'm not going to be talking about each uh, model of an aircraft. I'm just going to talk, talk about the manufacturers. So for general aviation, if you re recall from our last um, introductory, general aviation are just pilots who are learning how to fly. They're student pilots, or they could be licensed pilots, and they're not flying for compensation or they're not flying for work and they're not getting paid to fly. Commercial pilots are those who are getting paid to fly or they're getting compensated for their flying. So that's the difference between a commercial and a general aviation. So if you're a commercial pilot, you can still be a general aviation pilot by flying a small airplane and you're not making money out of it. Um, so to give you guys the top manufacturers for general aviation commercial air, uh, commercial aircrafts, we have the Cessna, which is Textron Aviation. Uh, it is like the Cessna 172 and stuff like that. We have the Beechcraft, Cirrus, Diamonds, Pipers. Those are the most common general aviation aircrafts. 
and the commercial aircraft. We have Airbus, Boeing, which are the most popular ones. But we also have the Embraer and the Bombardier, the Gulfstream and the Pilatus. Those are also uh, commercial aviation aircrafts. Although some of these can be uh, changed around, you could be a you could be a commercial aircraft, fly, uh, commercial pilot flying a Cessna, but you know that's not really common. <laughs> so those are just you know the most common aircrafts that you will see out there, and yeah. you would most likely see a commercial aircraft at a commercial airport like San Francisco, and you would see general aviation aircraft at small airports like Reed Hillview or any uh, small minis municipal airports. Yeah, most of the most general aviation aircraft that you see people flying around for fun are these propeller propeller powered ones like Cessna's Beechcraft. As he said, this is definitely on the more this is definitely on the more for fun side. Whereas commercial mm -hmm. aviation, if you look at the word commercial, you can make money. So that's that's all that means. Oh, so airline pilots. Stephen, real quick, Stephen was mentioning pilots too, and like it can get a little confusing. So I just want to uh, clarify something very quickly. So commercial aviation. So if you fly for an airline, those pilots are they have a, a commercial license, but the, that's not all you need to run an airline. You need a separate certification called an ADP ADP license, which is an airline transport pilot license. Um, so although the planes are called commercial, uh, to fly big airliners for big airlines, you would need another actual certification from the FAA to fly those. Commercial pretty much just means that you can make money off of your airplane. Yeah, a lot of people refer to airline to pilots as commercial pilots, and that is incorrect. Mm -hmm. uh, airline pilots flying passengers around in you know, Boeing and Airbuses, um, they're airline, airline transport, transport pilots. pilots. They're ATP pilots. Um, commercial pilots is the step before you is a license before you get ATP. And commercial allows you to basically fly a Cessna, Beechcraft, Cirrus. Uh, commercial license lets you fly general aviation aircrafts by ma uh, and still make money. For basically. making money, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and ask it in the chat. Yeah. And if you we've... would like to direct our questions. Uh, if you're not watching live stream, you still want to direct questions, of course, you can email our, the questions to flyprojectaviate at gmail.com, which and is we'll, in the next slide, we'll have slide that. 26. Also put that in the chat as well. Mm -hmm. And we've now we've approached the end of our first lesson. Thank you, everyone, for uh, tuning in or for watching this video if you're watching the replay. Uh, it really means a lot to us to have you here. And we'd also like to thank our little guinea pig, Calvin, who is still flying around, not noticing that I'm streaming his screen right now. But, uh, well, I want to thank him for being a representat represent representative of you all in the audience. And I hope we can make this a very fun journey and slightly crazy as you watch the crazy maneuvers in our flight simulators so that you know what not to do in real life. Don't forget to uh, touch... Oh... Give me a second. Uh, really quick, there's one thing I wanted to add. Uh, don't forget to touch down on the like and subscribe buttons and so that you can get notifications on our next upcoming streams and to help keep us going. It really motivates us that you guys are here watching us. And thank you. You can go ahead and show slide 27 as an outro. All right, thank you for joining and happy flying. Here's your little happy dolphin for the day. That's a dolphin, right? On the Airbus Beluga. Yeah. It's a Beluga whale. Oh, there you go, Beluga whale. Our next meeting is to be decided, but all, our, all of our slides are consolidated in this one uh, giant slide. I'll show you that now. All our slides are consolidated here. It's the same link, so you can get access to all of our slides from every single one of our lessons here. And we've divided them up into, we have red ones to show. Uh, to access our yeah. slides, go into the description and it says to view our presentation slides. Please go here to go ahead and click that link and you'll find the slides to both our introductory meeting and this meeting today. Yeah. And all future <laughs> meetings. Yep. All right. Thank you, everyone. I will now stop the stream and take care. And Good yep. to see you. You should do like an outro music. Yeah, we're going to have outro music soon. I'm sorry this is such a boring way to end it, but we'll have it soon. All right, thank you. Bye. Oh my goodness, Calvin. Day. Do we Bye. have to see that? <laughs> All right.